and welcome to today's daily video devotional. My name is Brent. I'm the pastor of our Cumberland site. Imagine you're the most important person in the history of the world. And you're about to have your final meal with some of your closest friends. What would that be like? What would you do? Well, let's take a minute this morning and look at what Jesus thought was important enough to do at his last meal with his closest friends. Stay with us. Hey, and welcome back. So what did Jesus think was so important that it was worth doing at his last meal with some of his closest friends? Well, today we're gonna to look at a passage out of John, and it's John 13, John chapter 13, verses one to 17. It's the message translation. And this is what it says. Just before the Passover feast, Jesus knew that the time had come to leave this world to go to the Father. Having loved his dear companions, he continued to love them right to the end. It was supper time. The devil by now had Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, firmly in his grip, all set for the betrayal. Jesus knew that the Father had put him in complete charge of everything, that he came from God and was on his way back to God. So he got up from the supper table, set aside his robe, and put on an apron. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the feet of the disciples, drying them with his apron. When he got to Simon Peter, Peter said, Master, you wash my feet? Jesus answered, You don't understand now what I'm doing, but it will be clear enough to you later. Peter persisted, You're not going to wash my feet ever. Jesus said, If I don't wash you, you can't be part of what I'm doing. Master, said Peter, not only my feet then, wash my hands, wash my head. Jesus said, if you've had a bath in the morning, you only need your feet washed now and you're clean from head to toe. My concern, you understand, is holiness, not hygiene. So now you're clean, but not every one of you. He knew who was betraying him. That's why he said, not every one of you. After he had finished washing their feet, he took his robe, put it back on, and went back to his place at the table. Then he said, do you understand what I have done to you? You address me as teacher and master, and rightly so. That is what I am. So if I, the master and teacher, wash your feet, you must now wash each other's feet. I've laid down a pattern for you. What I've done, you do. I'm only pointing out the obvious. A servant is not ranked above his master. An employee doesn't give orders to the employer. If you understand what I'm telling you, act like it and live a blessed life. Jesus, the son of God, in his final meal with his closest friends, does something that would be so beneath him in their culture. We would think of it and go, it's kind of gross washing someone's feet. But most of us, wear shoes that are covering our feet. Think about these guys. They're walking through the desert. They're walking on dirt roads in little sandals. Their feet probably stink, are gross. And even culturally, for them to wash someone else's feet would be a pretty humbling thing. But Jesus doesn't miss a beat. He doesn't skip a moment in that. He just gets up and does it. And he doesn't just wash the good guy's feet. He washed Judas's feet, already knowing that he was going to betray him later that night. I want to ask you something. What feet do you need to wash? Now, this isn't strictly related to washing people's feet. Don't worry, you don't need to break the social distancing and go door to door washing your neighbor's feet right now. That's why Jesus made it clear this is a pattern I'm setting out for you is to serve others and really serving them in some pretty humbling ways. Some ways that might even feel beneath you, but they weren't beneath Jesus. This is paramount, absolutely paramount to his mission, vision, and values and his purpose is for us as followers of Jesus and how he was going to do things. 
It's actually also a key to living a blessed life. It said it right there from Jesus himself. If you understand what I'm telling you, act like it and live a blessed life. You want to have a blessed life? What can you do for someone else? Who can you serve today? I've told our church this before, but I really believe every need is an opportunity to succeed. Every need is an opportunity to succeed. And so in saying that, I'm going to ask you today to start adopting a mentality that says, the most important thing I can do is whatever God has put in front of me. Or said a little differently, the most important thing you can do is whatever God has placed in front of you. What opportunities, what unique advantages has God given you to serve in and around your life? Other people to encourage, to build them up, to help them with a practical need, to walk alongside of them in prayer, to simply be an ear for them to talk to because maybe they're alone right now and they have no one but the walls in their house near them. We can do this. It's actually a part of living a blessed life. And so I want to ask you to take a step this morning and to serve and to look for opportunities to serve. You can't meet every need, but you can meet a need. And you can meet the next need. And you can invite God to help you do that. Now, there's an irony going on in our culture right now, and I don't know if you've caught it, that some of the bravest people in our nation right now are actually doing some of the jobs that so many people look down on the most. Our fast food workers, our janitorial and custodian people, our grocery store employees. I mean, think about it. They're going out every day and risking themselves so that we can have what we need at home. The next time you go to the grocery store, the next time you're at the gas station, the next time you get a coffee at Tim Hortons or whatever it is, pause and sincerely thank them because they're doing an amazing job. And so are the rest of our frontline workers. And we so appreciate so much of how our government is handling this right now. Let's go help someone else. Let me pray for you today. God, I thank you so much that you have blessed us with the opportunity to serve and encourage others. That you knew what was going to be happening and you already placed people in those positions. I thank you for every person working on the front lines right now. And I thank you for every person staying home with their families, doing the schooling online with their kids and all our teachers creating content for these kids to have. We're a blessed nation, even in the middle of this right now. And we say thank you. Thank you for our leaders who are making extremely difficult decisions. But God, we just ask for you to give us wisdom and discernment to meet needs around us. To be like you to people who need it. Open our eyes and our ears to see and hear the needs around us. And open our hearts to act with compassion and love and care because it is what you modeled and it was of high value to you. So we thank you for it in Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. If you need or would like prayer, feel free to email us, pray at the pc.ca, or you can call the church at 905-574-3900. I also want to encourage you to click the subscribe button or the notification bell below so you can stay up to date when these videos are coming out. And please like and share this on social media so that others can be encouraged. If you've missed our Sunday mornings, you can also click a link that's going to be right here to watch this past Sunday's message. It was a great one. It was a great service. We love you. We appreciate you. And we'll see you tomorrow.